Hello, chess fans. Welcome to another edition of Chess Chat. I am your host, George Merijanian, Program Director of the Wachusett Chess Club, and we bring you this program so that we give you a deeper understanding and an appreciation of the exciting world of chess. And this club, Wachusett Chess Club, of which I'm the Program Director, meets every Wednesday evening from 7 to 11 in room C159 of the McKay Campus School at Fitchburg State College. And with me, once again, is my longtime colleague and trusty co-host, Martin Lane of Lunenburg, one of the strongest and most active chess players in North Central Massachusetts. Welcome, Marty. Hello, George, good to see you again. Always a pleasure seeing you, Marty. Well, Marty, this has been a very active period for chess. Right, it's, everything's, it's turned into kind of a championship season. It has. In fact, just a couple of, just a, uh, back in mid-May, we had the World Championship. Right, we had the World Championship. We had uh, Topolov versus the defending uh, yes. champion. Yes, Veselin Topolov of Bulgaria. Right. He actually played the, defend, the current champion, Vishwanathan Anand of India, and lost. Right. Anand retained his, his title. title. Right. So that happened in mid-May. And shortly thereafter, we had the U.S. Championship start in St. Louis, Missouri. And, and that actually, we have a new champion in, in, in St. Louis. Maybe our, our director, Darren Dame, can actually show, some, uh, show, show us some photos from the U.S. Championship. We'll just call up some photos. Now, here on the left, we have Yuri Shulman playing Gadakomsky. The player on the right who's, uh, is Gadakomsky, who is the new U.S. chess champion. He won this uh, championship back in 1991. 1991, right. Exactly, 19 years ago. And again, this year he won it. Here is a, a, a recent photo from the championship in St. Louis. And we're going to go... And he, uh, he took a break from chess shortly after that. Yes, he did. He stopped playing chess and he pursued... He went into, to study medicine. And, medicine. and then law. And, then, and then, he, then he went into over to law. Right. So he is... And he only uh, returned what, about six years ago? Yes. It's been, it's, it's been a relatively short period. Right. Now, Gadakamsky here is on the left playing Nakamura. Hikaru Nakamura on the right was the defending champion. He right. won this championship last year in St. Louis, and this year he lost. Right. He lost, and we're gonna, the game yeah. we're going to present is a game that Nakamura lost a key to game. Yuri. Yeah. The game we're going to present to our right. viewers is a game against Yuri Shulman. Now, this is not to be confused with the U.S. Open Championship. No, no, this U.S. Is, Open is open anyway. The format anybody. here is quite different. It is quite different. This, the U.S. Championship is an invitational. Right. What they did, they, they invited 24 of the top, top players, players in the country. country. Right. You had the defending champion, Nakamura. You had the winner of the U.S. So Senior Open, open right. who was the only player from Massachusetts, Larry Christensen, the right. grandmaster who lives in Cambridge. Cambridge. And then we had, the, we had seated uh, by rating, I think the top 11 players from the country, right. including Komsky and uh, Alexander Onishuk of Baltimore. We had to, we, this had to be one of the strongest U.S. chess championships in, right. in, in its history. Okay. So, but you know, let's talk about other championships before we get back to the U.S. Sure. championship. Sure, <laughs> we've got plenty. Now, after the U.S. championship, which ended uh, about May 25th, right. About four or five days at, thereafter, we had a state championship right. in Lemonster in Lem right. at the Sheraton uh, by Four Points Hotel. Yep. And now we have a new, we have new co-champions for the state of Massachusetts. We have Grandmaster Alexander Ivanov of Newton, Massachusetts, right. and Igor Iv uh, Foigel, who's an international master from Brookline. They are now co-champions. They drew in the last the round of the tournament in Lemonster, and they are now the 2010 uh, Massachusetts State right. champions, co-champions. Right. And we have a club championship yes. going on. Yes, and just this past week, actually it was on June 9th, we now have a new Wachusett Chess Club champion. His name is Tony Cecilini. He's a Class A player from Jaffrey, New Hampshire. He just joined Just us. joined a few months ago. Yes, he did. And he, uh, he's, a fan he's a fanatical player, a great player. I mean, very skill a very skilled tactician. And he won, the, he scored four and a half points out of five. And he is our new champion of the Watch Through the Chess Club. So we certainly will be doing a program on, on Tony and, uh, and other champions along the right. way. But let's get back to this our US, champion. US championship. Right. Marty, what we're going to do is present this game that Hikaru Nakamura played in the, in the t tournament uh, as white. 
He played against Yuri Shulman. Right. Now, Yuri Shulman was, is a former U.S. champion. In fact, I'm, I'm going to see what year he won this. Yuri Shulman was champion in 2008, so two years Let's ago. Go. Right. But, Sh but Nakamura was considered the favorite. So in the tournament, we're going to present a game that's probably the most interesting game from the, this year's U.S. championship. So how does this game start? Okay. Nakamura's white. What does he play as his first yeah. move? Well, Nakamura chooses to open uh, by moving his pawn on E2 to E4. We've discussed this many times. It's, it's the most common opening move it, because it's one of the strongest opening moves. It, uh, it moves a center pawn to the center where it attacks to the D5 and the F5 square. It opens up important diagonals for the white squared bishop and for the queen. It's, it's an excellent opening move. Okay. Very popular move. Right. All right, what Shulman did uh, for his reply, well, he played pawn to e6. He played right. e6. He didn't play to e5. Right. He played e6. Now, what is this? This must have a name. Well, it has a name. Like, as, as we've discussed before, most, almost, oh, well, actually all the chess openings have a name, sometimes attached to a player, sometimes attached to some other uh, significant event attached to the opening. This happens to be called the French defense. Okay. And you know the story better than I do. It dates back to the 19th century in a famous match. Yes, I can, I can tell the story. You know, this, this defense has been known for at least 500 years. Right. It, was, it goes back to the 16th century at least. There was a, a Spanish writer uh, by the name of Lucena who wrote about chess, right. and he mentioned this defense. But it wasn't until the mid-1830s, actually it was 1834, that there was a correspondence match between London and Paris. And this took from, from 1834 to 1836. Because the only way to get the moves from London to Paris was what? By, by boat and yeah, by force. Yeah, by, right. It was all postal. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what the Parisians played against the Londoners, when the Londoners played E4, the Parisians played E6. And the, the name, the French defense, caught on. Yeah, and it's been known that way And it's way been ever known since. as the French defense right. ever since then. Although the defense has been known 500 years, you know, uh, ago. But again, the name has stayed with us and will always stay with us right. as the French defense. Right. All right, so what does one do against the French defense? Well, why, White, I mean, hypothetically, White has lots of options. He could develop a knight or the other knight. He could develop his bishop if he wanted to. But if Black is going to give up occupying the center, if he's not going to challenge that center directly, uh, what I would bet 90% of the players do is they play the pawn on D2 to D4, which is what Nakamura did, occupying the center, taking those center squares. All right, so it's, it's always a good idea if your opponent gives you a chance to put two pawns, pawns in the center, right. you should always you take, take advantage that of that. Right. right. Okay, so what Shulman did on his second move, well, he followed up with D5. Right. All right, so now with this move D5, now he's attacking the pawn on E4. Right. Which so is undefended. White has some options. He can advance the pawn. That's okay. One he, choice. Uh, he could. He can defend the pawn by putting a knight on d2. All right. He could put as what happened in the game. Put it on to c3. He could exchange the pawns, but that doesn't. That doesn't give White any kind. That really deadens the game and probably. And you know it. what's interesting about that? That exchange. The the e e, e takes d5. Right. That's what the Londoners played against like, the Parisians. Just, they gain nothing, nothing out of no, it. They, in fact, they the lost the match. match. They lost their correspondence yeah. match by playing something. It doesn't present any challenges to black right. to exchange right. pawns here. Right. Now, as you pointed out, you pointed out the knight developing a knight defending this pawn, right. either to d2. And Which is what I do. And what's, what's interesting about this knight d2, it blocks the bishop, but there's a reason why playing the knight to d2 to defend the pawn uh, is a choice of many players, because it, it, it actually prevents, prevents a pin. A pin. If, the, if the bishop were to come here to attack you and pin the knight. You simply advance the pawn and now the bishop has to go somewhere. The bishop now has to retreat. It's a lost move. So it's, it's a waste. Right. Okay. That is why the knight would go to d2. But in the game, what did Nakamura, however, play in the game? Nakamura took the, uh, the knight on b1, played it to c3, which is a very standard move. It does allow the pin, as we'll see. Um, Nakamura, by the way, came in for some criticism for allowing Black to play the French defense. Shulman is a well-known expert on the French. And he and, knew that. Nakamura, and he knew this. He and, knew that. Nakamura right. knew, knew that. that Shulman. So he's, he's really challenging Shulman, uh, really. to He's playing to Shulman's strength, but he's, it's a way, it's a challenge. Okay. Yeah. So Shulman now has choices. In this position, 
uh, one could capture the pawn. Right. D takes e4. That's right. one. And then you recapture with the recapture knight. Recapture the knight. And it's a or yeah. that's or you could actually put more pressure on the pawn right. on e4 by playing knight f6. Right. That's another option. Right. But what uh, Schulman played was bishop b4, pinning the knight. Right, which renews the attack on the e4 pawn. Right, exactly. Now because the, now the knight can't recapture because it's pinned against so the, the king. So the, the pawn on e4 is vulnerable. Right. Okay, so and what, what does... what Nakamura uh, does is he advances the pawn. Again, exchanging would gain nothing. And so he advances the pawn here. And in a way, it takes away that square for the knight now. Okay. Um, All right, so what Schulman did in response was strike back with c5 hitting at the base of this pawn, right. this little small, this small pawn chain here. Yeah. All right, so he'd like to disrupt, he would yeah. like to actually break up yeah. the, the pawn chain. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, black has a nice little setup. He's got extra space for the knight now behind that pawn. So um, white really needs to not allow black to carry out that particular plan. And so he challenges this bishop. He's going to play, he played the pawn on a2 to a3, forcing black to decide what he's going to do at this point. Okay, well, he only has two choices. Right, go back. He, or he either retreats. Yeah, he only has one square to retreat right. to, or he takes the knight right. with check, and that's what he did. Right. He, he, he captured the knight on c3. Right. Bishop takes c3, check was his move. Right, and All that right. forces the recapture by the pawn on bishop, uh, on b2 rather, taking the bishop on c3. Okay. All right, so now what does black do? Black actually, neither player, now after these exchanges, you see, we have no development, and yeah. peace development. We have to get pieces right. developed. Okay. Now, this has a this 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 variation of the French defense has a name. Oh yes, yeah. it does. What we have seen with the pin, the bishop b4, right. is known as the vinavar right. uh, variation. And it's it's named, kind of a strange story to that. Or it's, well, it's not interesting. A story, the, it's named after a Polish, a 19th century right. Polish player. Uh, Simon Vinaver. Right, a, a contemporary of Tarasch and Lasker and Steinitz. And exactly, and however, I don't know really why the, his name was attached to the variation, because the person, the player who really pioneered this d defense, this variation, was Aaron Nimsovich, Fitch, right. who, the Latvian-born master who contributed a lot to opening theory. Right. If you really want to learn about chess, you have to pick up books uh, about Aaron Nimsovich, game collections, books that he's written, like uh, My System right. or The Blockade. Chess, my pra chess Praxis. Chess Praxis. Right. Anything by Aaron Nimsovich. If you want to become a really good chess player, get books written by Aaron Nimsovich. You'll improve just by studying his books. But Aaron Nimsovich really pioneered, popularized this. And another player who really uh, contributed a lot to the theory of this uh, variation was Mikhail Botvinnik, Botvinnik of right. Russia, who became right. world champion right. in 1948. And traditionally, names are attached by the prominent by a prominent player who who develops these things. Exactly. But, but how many games do we have in in the databases that have been overplayed using very this? few? Yeah. In the in English speaking countries, it is known as the Vinaver Vinaver. variation. But in the rest of the world, world. in the non English speaking world. world most most players would refer to this as the Nimsovich variation, and I've never seen an explanation for why that is or who attached that name. No, I, I, I also have not seen why Vinavra got credit right. for the variation, but, uh, but maybe does. someone is willing yeah. to do the research. But again, I only I think I only found a handful of games right. that Vinavra played. Right. All right, so we're in this position. It is now Black's move, and Black has the the, the conventional moves here for Black are either to play the queen, queen can go to c7 with an eye of putting pressure, you know, putting pressure on this, of course right. it's defended, the e-pawn is defended, but also uh, uh, along the c-file, wow. looking at this pawn. Yeah. If you're not going to play the queen to e7, you can play knight to, to, right. to e7. Which Schulman has done on many occasions. He's that's played knight That's his most common response. Okay. But in, the game, in this game against Nakamura, yeah. Schulman played Eight. queen a5. Now what, what do you think of this move? Well, up to this point, it's um, up till recent years, it's been fairly rare. I mean, in researching this, it hasn't been played very often at all. Um, there is, in fact, a, a, a Bobby Fischer game from the Segan Olympiad in 1970 against a player named Hook. Yes, uh, and oh, Fisher oh, Bill Hook, yes, right. right. And Fisher played the queen to g4, which has been seen. On, uh, you know, the few times that this was played, this was one of the main responses, it threatens the... the Attacks the, 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 the g-pawn, right? okay, which would force either this pawn to be advanced or the king to move over to defend it. Right, 
Right. Okay, and, and what happened in the game was actually after this pawn was defended, I think he played, did he, he play? Played, King moves over. King over. Then what and did Fisher do? I, I think he attacked with H4, did he? No, he, or, he brought uh, the queen back. Right, that's yes. right, he came back. What and he then did he is he, he forced black to mm -hmm. cast, that's forfeit right. castling, and, and, plus and then retreated. And all his stuff in the corner. Okay, yeah. that's right. But true. anyway. Yeah, okay, so, so what did Nakamura But what play? Nakamura did was, was something that, um, well, he, he played bishop. I, I think Fisher played bishop to d2 first as well. Right, first bishop d2. To, yeah, threatening to right. expose the queen. Okay, yeah. all right. So what uh, Shulman did as we move along with this right. game. Queen a4, now he's renewed the attack, attack. a double attack, attack on this on pawn. This. So he, right. he, de he defends it by, Nakamura defends this by developing the knight on g1 to f3, defending the pawn, developing a piece. Okay, so it's defended now uh, two times, knight right. and, and the pawn on c3. All right, so what Schulman does is put more pressure on that pawn on d4 and place knight c6. Right. Okay, so now we have three Three attackers right. on this pawn. All right, so what does uh, uh, Nakamura do here? Well, what he does is he chooses to advance the uh, pawn on h2 to h4, which always looks like a, you know, every time I look at it, it looks like a beginner's move, but there are, per, you know, it, it, it does. It frees up, it frees up, it allows that uh, space for the rook to come up if it needs to. Well, it signals and a it, king's side attack. Right, it signals, when you, when you, right. When you start moving I mean, your the, h pawn. Well, yeah, it means that king. this king is not going to go over there. It's right. going to stay here. Exactly. Uh, so this is actually right. a signal to, the, to attack. Right. All right. So what uh, Shulman did here, well, the fact that he's, he's, he's pounding on this pawn on d4 three times, he now captures. This C pawn takes right. on D4. Right. C takes D4. Yeah. All right, so that pawn is gone. And you and I looked at an earlier game against Khalifman when he didn't do that. In fact, he chose to advance that pawn, but he got hammered doing that. Exactly. He, he locked the nothing. position up and yeah. gained nothing. Right. Yeah, by, so by, by so he found an improvement to that earlier game. All right, so the Nakamura recaptured. Now, this pawn could be captured, but instead, Shulman said, look it. I've got to catch up in development here. Well, I think he's, I think he's worried about a king side yeah, attack. He, exactly. wants to get, he says, I'm not going to go grabbing a pawn now. I'll get it later. Right, right. He says, I'm still putting pressure right. on this. So he plays knight, the g knight, to e7. Knight g e7 is his move. Right. So he's getting this knight into play. All right, so. So Nakamura uh, is going to go with his attack. He's going to move this pawn down to okay. h5. Okay. Looking to break up the pawn. The king is, all, is, is looking exposed in the middle. Right. And also, besides advancing here, he also has the threat of bringing the rook, rook to h4, four, and now this giving that. defending that pawn. Right. That pawn is now safe. All right, so what uh, Shulman did after h5, well, he said, wait a minute, I've got to take the pawn We're right next away. Now or never. If, if I don't take that pawn right away, this rook on h4 right. will defend it, I'll never right. be able to get that pawn. So he plays knight takes d4. d4. He takes that pawn. So he's now. Now, what, uh, what Nakamura cannot do is he cannot play this rook immediately to h4 because yes. because the king being where it is allows uh, allows knight take the knight on f3 Three, we check check right check here and then and he, the has to, he has to he has to on the recapture the queen wins, wins the rook. rook so he can't do that now he's got to right. do one other move first all right so that's poison okay. right that's poison all right so he can't uh, so the rook Cannot move to right. h4. And also, so, he's, he's also. Oh, you look at this. He's got this. The threat checking. is actually so knight takes right. on c2 so check. He's, he's got four. a couple of things he All right, needs so to do. So he has to defend. Right. So he's going to play bishop to d3, defending this pawn. All right. All right, so Shulman is concerned about this uh, threat of advancing this pawn, right. the, you know, disrupting these pawns here. So he plays h6. Right. That stops this advance of the h pawn. Right. Okay, so what does Nakamura do okay. now? Well, keeping in mind that he would like to play the rook to h4, but he can't because of that exchange yes. with the check. Okay. He takes the king where it can't be checked. He plays it to f1. With the idea of playing following Now up he can play rook, rook h4. Because now, now if he tried to take the knight, he would lose the queen. Okay. Now, in order to stop that, black only has one way to stop yeah. that rook from going to going h4. Up. He He's plays knight takes f3. Right. He eliminates that knight on f3. Right. Right. And, and white recaptures with the queen. He's not going to recapture with the pawn because that would open up yes. a, a critical file. So he's going to recapture, which develops the queen, puts the queen down in an attacking position. Okay. All right, so now Schulman faces the problem that every player who plays the French defense has right. is the problem with the light, light squared, squared bishop. bishop. It, because this is locked in here. This is known as the bad bishop. Right. Those, those players who play the French defense 
are, are going to be saddled with a bad bishop. And the question is, how do we get this bishop into play? Well, what Schulman does, he plays b6. Right. He plays b6 to open up, you know, right. the diagonal for the well, bishop. Well, and to, because he, even though he could play to d7, that's, that's nowhere near as an effective square as, as being able to come out this way. Right. Okay, so he plays. All right, so what does uh, Nakamura do now? Well, one big weak spot is this pawn right here, which is undefended. Right. So he puts his queen in a position where it can be defended, also defending this square if he wants to move the rook up, attacks that pawn. Okay, so now we have the attack on, the, on the, this pawn, undefended. But what Schulman does, instead of coming over here, and he doesn't defend this pawn. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. And first of all, bringing the rook over, defending the pawn does not work because this rook here would allow this bishop to, to come, come here down. like to attack right. this. Right, now he'd have for, to do something Now like he has that. to move the rook. If he moves the rook back to attack the bishop, now the queen, queen comes down. Threatening the rook. Threatening the rook and uh, wins, wins the pawn. Well, it pawn. doesn't quite win the rook. Yeah, yeah it wins or, the pawn. But pawn right, right. Yeah. exactly. And now, and now we're attacking here and we're also attacking this pawn. Right. So, yeah. so this is very dangerous. Okay, so let's put this back. So instead of coming and defend this pawn, he has what we call a Zwischenzug, an in-between move. He plays bishop a6 first. Bishop a6 is Schulman's move. So what does uh, Nakamura do now? Well, it wouldn't serve, he could, re, he could capture the bishop or exchange the bishop by capturing on a6 and the queen captures, but with check. Right. So he doesn't really need, he doesn't really, that doesn't serve his purpose. That doesn't accomplish anything for him. So he's gonna come down, he's gonna take that pawn, threatening the rook. Okay, so now the rook is under attack, but Another move, instead of actually moving the rook, which we'll ha we have to do, eventually. Save it. Yeah. What he does is he follows through with bishop takes d3 check. Right. So now that bishop is gone. Right, and now he has to recapture, keep things even. All right. All right, so now that rook, now the, the rook has to move. Right. All right. And he, cert okay, so what he does, he plays the rook to g8, attacks the queen. Queen, and also, you know, attack, yes, has, comes it, down on an important file. Exactly. Well, the queen has to get out of the way, so she's gonna recapture on h6, which really frees up this, this pawn that could threaten to um, become a queen at some point. All right, you're right. This, this, yeah, this is a pass pawn. Because if, right. if this pawn ever reaches this eighth rank, right. it could be con it, it, uh, converted uh, into... Uh, you know, a, a, a passed pawn like that gets... I think it was Nizmzovich says they, they grow and they grow in strength as they go down the board. Yes, he did say that. All right, so after queen takes a6, now here is a very strong move by Schulman. He plays queen to d4. Now, what is this threatening? Well, a number of things. Yes. First of all, first and foremost, it's threatening this rook with check. Yes. Which, in turn, we, you know, it could cause all kinds of problems. Right. And it's going to, at the very so least. So that's the major threat. That's the, the major queen to, yeah. Uh, secondly, it, it's threatening this pawn with check. Right. And this pawn. This pawn. So we have three, pawn. three, two three pawns threats. under attack and a rook. Right. So that rook has to save itself. Yeah. So he can't. He's got to save itself and at least one pawn. So the only choice, really, is to come to e1, defending this pawn. Okay, all right, so what Schulman does now, he just captures the pawn on d3. Queen right. takes d3 check. Right. And, and now he, uh, how is our pawns materially? We've got what, uh, five pawns five versus? To five. five to five, okay. Right. So we're back to even on pawns. Remember, Nakamura actually sacrificed the pawn, pawn in the opening. Right. Yeah, but now we're, we're even as far as okay. material, but, but it's the position that's gonna tell the story here. So, not the material. Yeah, he's got to be careful about what he does. He so plays, the king has the king to go goes to G1 to get out of check. All right. Okay. Now Schulman comes up with another strong move. He plays rook on A8 to C8. Right. Seizes the open the file. file. And it's always good. Well, he's got two big open files. Yes, there. he does. You're right. He's got the rook on G8 on this file and the, the rook on this open file. Right. And it's always good if your opponent gives you a chance to put a rook on an open file or a semi, here a semi-open semi open file. file. Because there's Do an it. enemy pawn It's, it's it, yeah. the best place to put rooks on yeah. open or semi-open yeah. file. All right, so what is well, the Well, one, al one alternative to c8 was, one, one alternative was for, instead of playing rook to c8, to play the queen oh, take on win a3. The pawn. Right. And then also to defend this knight, give, yeah. give a little extra protection. But it also gives two you know, protected pass pawns oh, on yes, this side. Oh, yes, he does. So, so he could have actually. So he had two really so good Shulman moves. So Shulman could have won the had, pawn and actually be threatened with the pawn. He had two good moves. Okay. All right, so, but uh, he's, he's being very active. Right. This is a reactive move. Right. Okay, so he so plays rook to c8. All right, so now what does uh, Nakamura um, do after rook c8? Okay, then he plays 
bishop to g5, which blocks off this diagonal. Yes, okay. All right, so in response, uh, Shulman plays queen f5. Right, two attacks on the bishop. So, so he's now he's attacking the, the, the bishop. Right, so twice. he's going to protect it with a pawn. Hopefully, he's, he's hoping that he's kind of going to close things up so his king will be a little bit safer and maybe mount his own attack. But this isn't actually, this isn't actually weaken the it, position of the it king does. by so, advancing this right. f-pawn. Yeah, so, so this actually makes it uh, very vulnerable. So what Shulman does, he brings his rook to c2, rook c2, he's down to the seventh rank. Right. And that's another thing, good thing to do. Right. If you're given the opportunity to put a rook or rooks on the seventh rank, of course, from Black's perspective, it, it, it is his seventh rank. It's the second rank in, in, in the, it, from, from the perspective of white. But yes, a rook on the seventh it's rank is powerful. powerful. Yeah. All right, so now, what does uh, Nakamura well, do? Nakamura now? plays rook to h2. Some people, a lot of people criticize it, but he doesn't have that many moves that he can do. He's pretty but, well locked But in. you know what he's afraid of? He was afraid, after rook c2, right. that Schulman was going to play queen, queen here, here and, right. thre and threaten, threaten the mate here. Right. So he's, he's yeah. anticipating Hating. the attack on the g-pawn right. by playing rook h2. Right. So he plays rook to h2. All right. So now what uh, Schulman does, he plays queen d. Why does he play queen d3? What's he threatening here? Uh, well, he, he, well he, he's threatening... He, uh, you can come here, right. threaten the rook. Right, exactly. All right. And we're threatening mate. All right, so, so he, he, after a queen d3, well, what uh, Nakamura does, does he threaten mate? Yeah, he, has, he, has the, he comes up with a mate threat of his own. He plays queen to f6. All right, so he's threatening. Queen takes the knight on e7, Take, checkmate. Right. All right, but you know, in this game, it's a case of first come, first, first serve. serve. All right. Right, the passive move in a... Probably is, a big is, mistake is, would have come back and come defend back. it. You're right. That's or he could take here and defend it. Exactly, right. Okay. So either, either way, but that's, but those, that's right. playing passively, passively instead of playing actively. So he's going to remove the main threat by capturing rook. Oops, I shouldn't do this. You're, it's your move, right? Well, no, well yeah, you can do that's it. that's what he does. You can <laughs> certainly do it because that's actually the move that Nakamura right. overlooked. He did not anticipate that Shulman was going to sacrifice his, the, what we call the exchange, right. giving up his rook for the bishop, which now takes away from them, takes away the mate threat. Right. So rook takes g5. And okay. So and, uh, and oddly enough, we looked at it. If pawn takes, we had thought maybe we found something here because what was played, Nakamura cap recaptured the queen. We looked at this. Yes. But when I put it on a computer, it turns out that this, eventually, on, according to one of our computer programs, ends up in a forced mate in 11 moves. And so that's it, astounding. How a, how the computer would, would, right and would, would, did you know did. Um, not and, and this computer is actually, uh, is, is, it's called Ripka. This one was Fritz. Oh, Fritz, I'm sorry, yeah. Fritz. Yeah, there's also, there's so, there's so many different computer right. programs, but Fritz is one of the most popular right. computer uh, uh, programs in the right. world. And it was able yeah, to find, find a force made in 11 moves. moves. Okay. But in any, so in any case, Nakamura he, plays with the queen takes All right. g5. All right, so the queen takes. So what uh, Shulman does here, he plays queen, now he plays queen yeah. d4 check. Right. Forcing it. To the corner. And it can't go to F1. Because it's instant mate. It's an instant yeah, checkmate. Okay. Right, so, so he has to go there. That's forced there. All right. So now with the king on H1, now Shulman comes with a very beautiful move. He plays queen E3. And Nakamura can only resign. Now, why did he resign? I mean, true. The queen is attacking the right. rook, rook with checkmate. Well, the rook can't take the queen because no. it's... The rook would come down, C8, check, and check. He, he, he can only block, block, block here, but then take it. would it just delay the checkmate. checkmate. Right. What would happen if, if in this position, that the the queen came back to h4, protecting the rook? That doesn't help matters, does it? Doesn't because he can still come back. And down. this is the crusher. Rook right. c1 is coming regardless. Because now the rook can't take the queen because it pins. All right, all right. So this is how the game ended. So right. after queen e3, the game ended. Well, chess fans, you see one of the one of the best games from this year's U.S. Championship. This is Yuri Shulman defeating uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Yuri Shulman then went on to lose in a tiebreak situation against Gadakomsky. We'll see you next time on Chess Chat. Stay tuned for the next program.